Myths of AIDS and Sex by Charles L. Jeschichter, New African, October 1994. The poster is seen in Kenya, below a lurid picture of a worm wriggling through a human heart. The caption reads, Careless sex is a fruit with a worm in it. AIDS at the 10. Th. International AIDS Conference in Yokohama in August, Dr. Yuchi Shayakawa put the sentiment in a different way. The African AIDS epidemic, he said, could be brought under control only if Africans restrain their sexual cravings. But Professor Nathan Klumick of the Universite Libre in Brussels is skeptical that Africans will ever do so. In a recent interview with Le Monde, Klumick claimed that sex, love and disease do not mean the same thing to Africans as they do to West Europeans because the notion of guilt doesn't exist in the same way as it does in the Judeo-Christian culture of the West. Such myths about the sexual excesses of Africans are old ones. Early European travelers returned from Africa bringing tales of black men allegedly performing carnal athletic feats with black women who were themselves sexually insatiable. The affront to Victorian sensibilities was cited alongside tribal conflicts and other uncivilized behavior to justify the need for colonial social control. Today, AIDS researchers have added new, undocumented twists to an old repertoire. Stories of Syrians who rub monkeys' blood into cuts as an aphrodisiac, claims that ulcerated genitals are becoming widespread, and urban folklore about philandering East African truck drivers who get HIV from prostitutes and then infect their wives. The World Health Organization claims that 10 million HIV-positive Africans are responsible for 300,000 cases of AIDS reported since 1981. On the face of it, this seems to be a catastrophe. Unlike in developed countries, where over 90% of AIDS cases are homosexual males, intravenous drug users and blood transfusion recipients, African AIDS is supposedly suffered by men and women in equal numbers who contract it, presumably from heterosexual intercourse. The African figures are often cited by the AIDS establishment and safe sex activists in Europe and the United States to prove that everyone is at risk, but increasingly, discrepancies about the dynamics of HIV transmission, skepticism about what really causes AIDS, and mounting evidence of imprecise medical diagnosis are stirring up a backlash among African scientists. They argue that in Africa AIDS is not a contagious epidemic linked to sexual habits, but is the new name for old diseases that result from inadequate health care, widespread malnutrition, endemic infections and unsanitary water supplies. Dr. Richard Cherimulubel of Zimbabwe notes sarcastically that, in order to have one-third of the sexually active adults in some Central and East African countries infected with AIDS, life in these countries must be one endless orgy. A growing number of African physicians including Dr. Mark Mata, Midland Center for Neurology in England, Dr. Sam Okwer, former director of AIDS research in Uganda, and Dr. P. A. K. Adi, director of clinical microbiology in Kumasi, Ghana, say they think the panic over the heterosexual transmission of AIDS may be a hoax. Dr. Felix Conady of Hulu, a Ghanaian physician at London's Cromwell Hospital, toured Africa countries a few years ago to assess the epidemic. In a scathing report for Lancet, Dr. Conady of Hulu asked if tens of thousands are dying from AIDS and Africans do not cremate their dead, where are the graves? Some Western scientists, including Dr. Luc Montagnier, the French virologist who discovered HIV, claim that the practice of female circumcision facilitates the spread of AIDS. How do they explain the fact that Somalia, Ethiopia, Djibouti, and Sudan, where female circumcision is the most widespread, are among the countries with the lowest incidence of AIDS? In fact, there is little evidence to support Western perceptions of African sexual promiscuity, widespread modesty codes for women, whose sexuality is considered a gift to be used for procreation, make many African societies seem chaste compared to the West. 
the Somalis, Afars, Oromos, and Amharas of Northeast Africa think that public displays of sexual feelings demean a woman's gift, so that sexual contacts are restricted to ceremonial touching or dancing. Initial sexual relationships are geared to the beginnings of making a family. The notion of boyfriends and girlfriends, virtually universal in the West, has no parallel in most traditional African cultures. No one has ever shown that people in Rwanda, Uganda, Zaire, and Kenya the so-called AIDS Belt Dash are more active sexually than people in Nigeria, which has reported only 722 AIDS cases out of a population of 100 million, or Cameroon, which reported 2,870 cases in 20 million. Scientists dismiss the notion that males from any continent or region are more addicted to sex than those from another because testosterone levels, the measure of sexual vigor in men, never vary more than a tiny fraction of a percent anywhere in the world. In 1991, researchers from the French group Medicine Sans Frontières and the Harvard School of Public Health conducted a survey of sexual behavior in the Moyo district of northwest Uganda, their findings revealed behavior that was not very different from that of the West. On average, women had their first sex at age 17, men at 19. 18% of women and 50% of men reported premarital sex, 1.6% of the women and 4.1% of the men had casual sex in the month preceding the study, while 2% of women and 15% of men did so in the preceding year. No national sex surveys have ever been carried out in Africa, yet its researchers blithely assume that heterosexual HIV transmission in Africa parallels the dynamics for HIV among homosexual men in the West. There is no scientific basis for this, 